We are recording again. Hello. Hello. Care to explain what's happening? We're sitting comfortably. <laughs> yeah, no. um, we're talking about April. Short story April. Exciting yeah. times. Mm -hmm. uh, in in our last instalment, we were talking about Scribe and the Doctor, and in this instalment, we are talking about uh, the next story that we're looking to do, which is the chapter one for split personality. Mm -hmm. um, yes, so during first half of the... W first off, we have declared April the short story April, because why not? <laughs> and it's so glorious. Yes, and the goal is to uh, take our short story drafts, which are in different stages of completion and processing, and uh, process them far enough that I can work on them on my own should any travels and and do that happen and uh, we have now reached mid-april and we have if you if you watched the previous video then you will know that we have uh, wrapped up uh, the first story of short story april uh, it is not complete but uh, but it is in the state that i can I can take it from there. And today we're gonna try to open up uh, a second project. And I am clicking it open right now. So our second bigger story editing project for the short story April uh, will be split personality chapter one repurposed. Mm -hmm. It might uh, will it will it have a a different name? Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. This is just a working title okay. to remind me where it came from and some of the original text. I should already know this. I think, but I don't. <laughs> yes. So what we have here is a first chapter of one of the stories that Knox has released. And in our current level of knowledge, we know very well that uh, the story as released is not actually uh, a... Mm, how should I put it? A, a, a properly made, made product, but it's, it's a first draft that's been released, basically. You can still find it in Amazon, if you're curious. <laughs> but we are taking that text, or we are taking that material, and we are uh, cannibalizing parts of it and making them into more compact and more purposed stories. So whether the whole book shall be treated uh, remains to be seen, but uh, several parts of the book will certainly receive a sort of tightening and makeover and, and and all that. And right now we are looking at the first chapter of the book, which we are processing into a short story that will serve as a chaos node in the bigger story. And uh, what we have done here so far is that we have taken the old text, we have cut it up, cut it open, uh, and made an outline based on the original. And I would say that the plot pretty much stays the same. We are not actually, we are not uh, changing what is happening. So that's, that's like uh, easy on one hand, but on the other hand, this story will be difficult as fuck because while we while we know exactly what's happening, we don't have any uh, proper new text for it. So this is like this is this is a challenge, uh, a different kind of challenge than Scribe and the Doctor was because in Scribe and the Doctor we had fresh-ish uh, story material that needed to be uh, that needed. Uh, structuring as well as uh, as wording, but here the structure is pretty much okay, and it's it's all 
iteration thing. Thoughts? Um, I I just agree. Basically, uh, there's a lot of work to be done in this one. Uh, there's m more notes and more like uh, ideas of mm -hmm. things. Uh, but from that, see now you raised an interesting point talking about how Scribe and the Doctor was sort of new text mm -hmm. when when we came to edit it, and how this is this is much older in a sense. Uh, and I think that actually has made our work a lot, a lot harder. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an interesting point. Uh, I just thought I'd come back to that. Yeah. Um, so here, what was the idea? I forgot. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had it. Ah, oh, yeah. So, uh, so one challenge here is to find the right words to fulfill the plot that we already have. But uh, that challenge is made uh, much more difficult by the fact that we we already have so much old text, you know, floating around, and also we have been processing this old text. So there's like uh, there's a bit of a material clutter uh, in terms of old text, uh, our commentary on the old text, our notes. So it's uh, uh, if a scribe and the doctor at one point ran into the over outlining uh, mire, then <laughs> the mire of over outlining. <laughs> there should be, there should That's be like be a location. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like a uh, uh, writer's life. Uh, Writer's life uh, fantasy map. The mire of our outlining. <laughs> the plot that drives you. <laughs> <laughs> the self fulfilling plot hole. <laughs> <laughs> and all that. So we should totally make that a thing. Also, yeah. people who, are, who happen to be watching, help make this a thing. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's tweet out these locations and, and, and join them into a one big map. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? <laughs> and who doesn't love a good map? Yes, I know. I know that all the all the fantasy writers that I that I follow and watch, uh, every everybody, I think without exception, uh, have at one point admitted that they they are they have this uh, map addiction going on. <laughs> so we just we just need to now we just need to scribble these things down and uh, and do it. Have I ever shown you my reference plate for when I'm writing just crazy stories and I need to <laughs> grab the uh, location of, of a system and its rough area? This is obviously 2D, it's not perfect, but this is the reference plate. Oh, can you see that? And it's got all the... Uh, it's got all the names of sort of like the most pop oh. my favourite systems, popular oh. systems. Um, so yeah, that's I, I, I do love a good map. <laughs> a good map is good. Oh, and actually, since I've pulled this off now, I can pull it up a bit further. There you go. It wasn't in line with anything. The tangential forest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love it. The tangential forest, that's another one. <laughs> <laughs> Write this down. The yeah. Mo yeah, immediately. <laughs> we can we can forget the rest, but these need to be written down. So, the the mire of uh, over outlining. Over outlining. With a hyphen, hyphen. Uh, the uh, what was the other one? The self fulfilling plot hole. That's a good thing you're recording this as well. Oh yeah. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> right, got it. Uh, I I forgot the third, but uh, then there's uh, the uh, forest of tangents or the tin tangential forest. The ch tangential groves. Ooh. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
look at these creative types. <laughs> <laughs> what were we doing? What were we doing? There was something going on. We were supposed to get started with the next short story. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what, so, so yeah. What we have here is uh, is the if in. Uh, if in Scribe and the Doctor, what we were dealing with was the mire of over outlining, then here we have run into the dungeon of excessive notes. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, excessive. <laughs> the bottomless dungeon of excessive notes. I'm in there. I'm I'm there now. Yeah. <laughs> folders above the computer. I am in the bottomless dungeon of excessive notes. Uh, another one that I would add to the map is the... How shall I put it? I, I know what it is, but now I just need to get uh, worded right. Boom, phrasing. The handwritten oubliette. How do you spell? O U B L I E T E T T E. E T T E. That's a very interesting it's word. It's a French. It's a. Uh, uh, it's the sort of pit that you have in uh, in a castle where you throw people to be forgotten. Oh, lovely. The forgetting place. <laughs> Forgottery. Ooh. <laughs> forgottery. <laughs> the, the handwritten oubliette of forgottery. <laughs> I thought you were gonna do one that was like I have I have achieved one thing off my goal of things today, so for the rest of like what a room that's that's dedicated to that. Um uh. sorry. <laughs> Almost started smoking then. There oh. shall also be the doodad meadow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, it's all fun and games here at Chaos <laughs> Everybody thinks we're so serious all the time, but no. There is... There is all sorts of shenanigans going on this is, here, don't you? This is how responsible adults work. Mm-hmm. Yo. Talking to responsible adults, the first thing... Uh, you did when you saw my whiteboard or oh, my blackboard. D very <laughs> and completely indicative of Chaos Nova, I feel. That's uh, that's that's what the uh, rating mature is for, after all. <laughs> <laughs> I filled up half a page of notes. The placeholder cobble, uh, cobbled path. Some of the names uh, might transform in future iterations, but like this is the uh, this is the rough outline, yo. <laughs> so we can do it. So we can start drawing up the map. And be like, oh, that goes there. Can change its name. There's of course the sea of procrastination. Oh, my favourite! I am a often <laughs> a traveller. The sea. Reminds me of that episode of Red Dwarf where they go into Rimmer's, uh, Rimmer's swamp, and uh, he's like getting he's getting hassled by his self doubt and things like that. And then as the Red Dwarf team come in to rescue him, all his like hope and self respect and esteem come back to life. And, and, and yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. The swamp that. of despair and things like that. Yeah. This this leech. Has that leech got mit rimmers? Oh no, what's the line? Oh, I can't remember it. It's funny, you should go check it out. If you haven't seen that episode of Red Wolf, go watch it. It's in like season 4 or 5, I think. I know uh, that I have seen it, but I don't remember it. Uh, it was more for the viewer's benefit, I think. <laughs> but yeah, okay. We've had our fun. Now we've got to get on with actual work. The writer's block. 
cliffs. <laughs> or the cliffs of writer's block. <laughs> Shit! I, I got excited about this and now my focus <laughs> immediately tries to home in on this. And uh, checking at the uh, speak personality text, I can see that we, we also have, might be seeing the beginnings of over outlining here as well. So it's like, they will do this, and then they will do this, and then they will, will, will do this, and it's like very detailed description of what, what there's going to be. Mm. But the text, it's like, uh, I, I think I've described it somewhere. It's like, uh, like it's a different gear in the brain that switches on when you're dispensing the text fragments. So it's like even even if the text is very very placeholdery and very uh, um, if it's very incomplete, it is still. Uh, a huge step forward from uh, so so it's like if you're if you're outlining then even from the most detailed outlining you don't get the story but if you if you have like uh, the even the crudest of text fragments that are actually like the flowing text like there's there is something for me at least there is something fundamentally different about the model of text and the text itself mm. so it's like even if the model is extremely detailed it will never give you the text itself the text has to flow on its own and i i, I know that uh, many people might disagree agree with this because I think there is even the snowflake method is where you go deeper and deeper and deeper and just uh, until you just uh, fill in the and then you have the text so yeah, I guess diff different strokes for different folks <laughs> I have used the uh, snowflake method before but I I prefer to just when I'm writing alone at least when I'm mm. writing alone I just smack I, I, I have a flicker of an idea and then I either create or use an old character stick them in that situation and then it's mm. just pants in the whole way and then from there it, it, I don't if I then go back through and edit it it isn't to do like bullet points or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or stuff like that it's to tidy up what's there a little bit and then, if it gets to the point where it's tidy enough to share with you, then it gets completely torn to pieces, and <laughs> nothing, nothing remains of the original apart from some, some key moments and some maybe the characters. <laughs> <laughs> characters and their pants. Mm -hmm. And that's all. <laughs> Everything else is forfeit. <coughs> so yeah, uh, I I think. Uh, I think let us spare ourselves right now. We have we have uh, shown what's ahead of us, and we have certainly mapped what we're dealing with. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would say that uh, today I don't have it in me to get proper started with this text here. But this this is our uh, our main objective for the second part of. April, uh, or or at least this week, we shall see. Maybe 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 we could divide it two we uh, divide it so that this week we will do split personality as much as we can, and then next week we will do destiny as much as we can. Maybe that's even better plan because that shortens yeah. the window, and if the window is shorter, that helps us focus. So yeah, you you heard it here, folks. <laughs> This week is for split personality. And next week is for Destiny's Trials. I love it. Some organic, on the fly planning. Yep. Natural. <laughs> just came out of nowhere, and it sounds good. I'm outlining while pantsing. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's talent. 
<laughs> so, yes. So this has been uh, our the beginning of our second half of the short story April. Stay tuned. Watch out for that uh, Meyer over outlining and the tangential groves, which we might or might not be posting somewhere somehow. Yeah. I think this is where we wave. Bye. Bye.